Hello, this is Jeremiah, the Food and Beverage Director, the Board Member, and the Teaser. Coming here live, but not live, from COG Streampunk. I wanted to walk you folks through a little bit of tea brewing. So, we're going to talk about a bunch of different types of tea brewing, as well as some different types of tea that and how we would brew them. So, we're going to start off with the, the, the simple, the essential, the Western style tea. So I have two brewing devices here. I have a, essentially it's very similar to if you have a um, coffee, a coffee press, a French press. Um, you're gonna put your tea in here and this is just basically gonna strain out your tea. So we're gonna take this, take some tea. Wrong one. I'm gonna use, I've got a, a lovely oolong. I want to use this one because it'll be shown off best by this container. So this is going to be two perfect teaspoon scoops. Uh, if you don't have a nifty little teaspoon, you can use a little teaspoon. That's why they're named aptly so. And we're going to just pour our water over. You can use a kettle, you can use um, a pitcher or a um, hot water carafe as I am. And then in a few minutes it will be it will be done and pour it out. So very simple process. Now we've got something very similar. We've got a basket infuser. This one also is going to be two cups, so I'm going to use two teaspoons. Now, these, this type of brewing is obviously what most people are familiar with. Um, it's, it's long, long and small amounts of tea. Um, however, as we'll get into in a little bit, there are actually other types of brewing um, more popular in Eastern cultures that are a lot quicker, a lot more nuanced, and are uh, really nice for, for for getting to know a tea by bringing out parts of it slowly instead of everything all at once. Now what's important is the tea itself has room to open up. So that's why these two methods are great because this infuser is large enough for the tea and this is just wide open that there's nowhere for the tea to get stuck. It's going to in, in essentially pull in as much water as it can, which is going to then release all of its flavor, flavors and compounds through osmosis. More pause. Uh, several minutes have gone by. The teas are now fully brewed. So if you want to come on in, you can see this one, you can see all the nice leaves floating around. Whereas this one, you might not be able to see quite well, but the leaves are whoop, opened up. So what's convenient about this one is when the tea is ready, you can quite literally remove it and serve it. Easy. We've got two different oolongs, so we've got this nice, lovely golden type color. Whereas if you're using something like this for a uh, French press, you would have to pour the tea out completely. So this is the most common besides tea bags that you're going to see. Um, fairly straightforward, not a whole lot of nuance to it. The biggest things are your texture, or sorry, your temperature and your time. Get rid of these. These ones are a little bit more still shut, um, which is a totally different discussion. Um, so. 
that is your your western drawing. But straight, straight, simple, very easy. That's how you're gonna do your your uh, black tea, green tea, white tea, your herbals, everything, your lungs. Very simple. So next we get into um, some different brewing methods. So we have a Japanese method using a um, kiyusu. Now I have two of them here. This one has a mesh strainer on the inside where the tea actually pours out, where this one actually has a, a, a strainer that comes straight out. Um, you will also sometimes find these just without the strainers. They do have small holes on the inside of the and the inside of here. I don't know if you catch it. Yeah, yeah, you tip it down just a little bit. There you go. A little um, bit. Yes, no? Yeah. Okay. Those will also help strain out the leaves because if you're using a, a, a loose leaf, especially a high quality full leaf, they're not going to end up sticking in there. Um, these are great for things like uh, most of your Japanese green teas, so your sencha, uh, bancha, uh, roasted green tea, like ho hojicha, which we have right here. Um, as it, I, much like this brewer, it gives them a lot of room to expand and open up. Um, but it's also generally made of a material that's going to hold the temperature um, at a at a certain point that that is optimal for those teas. So different different materials, glass will cool down the quickest, ceramics will cool down slower, clays will cool down the slowest, um, and that will have a great effect on the brewing of your tea. So with something like this, you can either, once again, use a teaspoon, or you can also use a weighted measurement, which I'm going to do for this. Zero that up. that is going to this is a little bit more precise way of doing tea so I've got my roasted green tea hoji cha delightful um, it's a little bit uh, toasty not not very smoky per se kind of um, Kind of like a like an oat almost, um, but it still retains a little bit of the vegetal vegetal notes of a um, green tea as well. So again, just gonna pour the water over. You'll notice I like to drizzle over top and kind of move the tea around as I'm doing it. Now you don't want to fill this all the way to the top. That'll make it difficult to pour. And then the lid will go on, and then this will take several minutes. So while this is going, we can move on to, to a couple discussions. Um, so you may or may not have seen these in, in your in your in your in your uh, tea travels. These are puer cakes. Um, they are compressed little teas. Often they'll have lovely um, artwork on the outside of the packaging but you end up with a disc a very hard disc of tea um, and so I'm going to show you how to break those up and how to brew them I'm going to put this one away because I actually have one that I've, I've got it into already so I wanted to show you the general idea of what they look like when they are whole. Now it's worth noting that all teas can be brewed all, all ways. It's just certain teas, such as this hojicha, are going to be more optimally brewed. Um, the way that that they're intended to be so i've got this is a 
different cake, and you can see the color on it's a lot different. It's a different style of tea. In order to break this part, I'm going to grab my tray. I take my tea cake. I've got a pu'er pick, which is essentially almost like an ice pick. And you're going to kind of you're going to find like an area that's a little loose, and you're going to put straight in. And you're literally looking just to pry that open. See how nice and easy that comes off? You're trying not to break it up too much as broken pieces will be astringent. Now you can break them apart into big pieces, as you can see. Um, but you do not want to break them up into small, small little pieces. You want to work in the areas that are easier to come, come apart. You don't want to force it. You want to be very careful because you definitely don't want to stab yourself. This is a process, but it is it is worth it. Once you're done with that, put it back. You can see you start in the middle and you just kind of pull everything in because you want to make this nice and tight. This is what's protecting your tea and keeping it as fresh as possible. And then sometimes we'll have cool little, little pouches you can put in afterwards. Too. When that's ready, I'm going to take my weighted measurement and I'm going to use that opening to get all the big pieces out. We're going to do a check on our hojicha now. Now Depending on, on how big of the tea and what kind of process you're doing, you may use what's called a, um, excuse me, a gong dao bei, which is, uh, translates into a, a fairness cup. It's basically a way to make sure everybody's getting the same tea. And so it also allows you to place another filter over top and get any smaller particulates. You see we have this lovely Lovely deep brown color. And then just for show, and the silver cup, the silver really brings out the, the color, literally lets you enjoy the tea. That's delightful. And it, you know, the each each brewing method is is very is similar but different. And so if you find you like one, you find you're more comfortable with it. If you just happen to like the way those look, you can absolutely use them. I, there's no there's no wrong way to do tea, but there are different ways to do tea, and that's why we're we're just gonna, you know, we're talking about it and we're showing off. I've got a little thing down here for excess water, so don't be worried, I'm not throwing it on the floor. So now we've got our pu'er. Excuse me. So, generally the best way to do pu'er is actually in a, um, a uh, ceramic or a clay pot. I've got this tiny, tiny ceramic pot. So, the uh, best way to do this, let me drop it a little bit. The best way to do this is a style called Gong Fu Brewing. Um, and what Gong Fu Brewing does is that it, it allows you to make very quick infusions. And as I said earlier, you're going to pull out 
a lot of different notes. You're going to experience different parts of the tea instead of getting everything blended together. So the first brewing is what we call a wash, and we, the wash is actually a very just very quick 10 seconds, and then we literally throw the tea away. Now a lot of times what you'll do is you'll take your long down bay and you'll take your brewing your brewing cup and you warm them up using the wash. So and you're not gonna see a lot of color, you're not gonna have a lot of flavor because the tea hasn't opened up yet. subsequent steeping after the first will add a little bit more time to uh, about five seconds it's not a lot of time this is great for having a nice quiet mindful um, tea journey at home just by yourself and you know, watching it open up, smelling it, um, and then, like I said, tasting tasting the different the different notes. So starting off, it's a very very pale. It's a very pale yellow. It's gonna be light in flavor. You can kind of taste where it's going to end up, but there's not a lot to it right now. Um, but every, every time we infuse it, the leaves are going to continue to retain the water from the first infusion, and it's going to kind of coax it along. Usually by the third or fourth infusion, that's when you really see the, the depth of color change as the tea really opens up. And as you get into the later stage of the, of the tea, um, you'll start to lose color, start to lose flavor as it kind of peters out. And every tea will be different. Some teas will go 20 plus fusions. Some will only get, get, give you about eight. Um, it really depends. So you can see the color is deepened a little bit. It's a lot more yellow. It's a lot more gold and even. More flavor to it. Very, very mellow. Now, one thing to note is that you do not want to do this with like a broken, a broken leaf tea. Um, that being like a very small broken up loose leaf it's going to be very astringent because the more the tea leaves are broken up the more easily they're going to give up their flavor um, that's why you see bag of tea like at the grocery at the restaurants and whatnot that's why it's pulverized into tiny bits because it allows it to infuse rather quickly just topping off my water for simplicity's sake, today I have all the water at the same temperature. Uh, I try to use teas that kind of can take that higher heat. Um, once again, discussion for another day, but when it comes to uh, time and temperature, each tea is going to be different. Now, we're not, this isn't going to get as brown as the other ones were because of the, the it is a, um, a raw pu'er, it is a shung pu'er, but it is going to get a deep, continue deepening color, get a little bit darker gold. Um, might be, I'm not sure if the camera will pick up how much more this deepened. But. It is. Now I'm starting to get some of the 
the, the bitterness. It's not a it, it's not a bad bitter, um, but there's a kind of um, pleasant astringency that this type of tea will have. It's definitely not for everyone. Um, it's not it's not my go-to, but I figured it'd be nice to show off. All right, we're going to do the last infusion of it before we move on to something else. Because I don't want to spend all day with you on one tea. We absolutely could, but... Now, this is a 90 milliliter teapot. They um, can go up upwards. These ones are 230. Um, but these are made for, specifically for the Gong Fu brewing for the um, quick infusions because you don't want something super large when you're doing that. Unless you're planning to share with people, of course. All right, I'm gonna give it a few more seconds. Definitely nice, nice deep color. I should have kept the, the, the first one so we could have done it side by side, but hindsight is 2020. But you can see how nice deep amber color that is. Um, that's probably gonna be about the point where it's really gonna pick up the most flavor. All right, so let me see if I can get you the leaves real quick so you can see them. Without burning myself. Ooh, that's warm. <laughs> decisions were made, decisions were not good. All right, let's try this again. That's fine, we'll do this. I've got plenty of cups. So you can see how the, what used to be a cake, a, a thick mixed together cake, now there's these leaves. Um, they're several years old, I believe this tea is three or four years old, so they've got a little bit of more dark color from, to them. They've naturally started to um, ferment and break down, which is, which is a positive thing. That's something you're looking for with this kind of tea. So, when you have those big cakes, you might also end up with these miniature cakes. These ones are actually called flapjacks, which is amazing. Uh, they have a nice kind of maple sweetness to them, which is naturally occurring. There's nothing added to them. All these teas are just straight tea. Um, when they come in something like this, or they might come in little bird nests or bells or other kind of shapes, I have some hearts which we'll be showing. These you do not have to break apart. Even though they're compressed, and you can see this one's heavily compressed, you do not need to break them apart. Um, same as before, we, we can either we can brew them in something like this. Very simply, you would take it, you would place it in, you would put your water over top, and you would brew it just just normal. Four to five minutes, it's gonna it's gonna break apart as it gets water or uh, and and, and um, kind of absorbs everything and it's just very easy to work with. However, we also have a, we also use what's called a gaiwan. I have two gaiwans here. I have a traditional gaiwan, which is which literally means a lidded cup. This one has a beautiful little coin inside. Um, shot that. These guy ones, I believe, are 120 uh, milliliters versus this 90 milliliter. It looks they look huge, but they're not not as big on the inside as they look. Uh, we also have what's called a um, easy guy one. So the easy guy one has these two little lips on the side, which allow you make it easier to pour and grab, as well as filtration here and an infuser basket here. 
And we will show you this afterwards. I want to show you what a traditional Gaiwan looks like. So, we would put our tea inside. Um, I prefer to put the, what's called the bing hole, the little indentation. That's the, that's the bing hole, this, this round disc of the bing. I like to put that in first, upward, so that there's more water, uh, more room for the water to collect. And then we're just going to pour the water over top. Now, when you're using a when you're using a guy one, you don't want to fill to this ring. You actually will see the water start stops right here, down here. That's going to ensure when you're grabbing this, you're not grabbing something super hot and burning yourself. So, same idea as before. It's gong fu style, so we're going to let it sit for ten seconds. And then you will grip the sides, thumb and in, in, uh, in middle finger, and then pointer finger goes over top. Now, for doing so, you're gonna just take this lip and give just a little bit of a, a curvature. That's gonna allow the wa water to come out. And you're gonna go just like that. You can always see a darker, darker tea is going to have a darker liquid. Once again, we're gonna use our cute little koi to go with our koi. So we're gonna warm this up. Thought process is that if you keep the temperature consistent, you're gonna have a better tasting tea, so. Again, this is gonna start to break up the tea. It's, it's gonna it's gonna slowly come together. Now, <clears throat> while we're waiting on that, I did not touch on this. This little tea tray uh, acts as a way to keep everything consolidated and to catch any excess water. So. It's very handy when you're doing gong fu brewing or even just regular brewing. I have this uh, at, next to my desk for when I make tea in general. This one's a little travel size one. They make huge ones. You can get them made out of stone, wood, all kinds of things. Um, they can really be a beautiful uh, piece, a uh, uh, piece of art and they add to the experience. got this lovely kind of rosé but but a brownish uh, you know uh, color as well give that a taste so this is a ripe or shoe cooler um, so I'm getting more musky kind of earthy notes danker but it has a very nice, nice sweet flavor to it. Obviously one would not be just pouring their tea off like I am. This is for the sake of showing you folks. couple more things to show you what, uh, after this and then um, hopefully if there's any questions you will reach out to me um, I'm obviously available through college and on my personal page why don't you give details Like before, it's slowly getting more color. Let's uh, let's do the silver again, so you can really see the vibrancy of that color and how um, how much darker it really is once it's in something.
opening up nicely. So, the leaves haven't quite broken up yet. This one might take a few more infusions to really get that to, to come apart. So I'm going to brew this next one along and hard enough to kind of talk about some other stuff real quick. So another type of, of tea you might come across that is compressed is going to be a tea ball, also known as a dragon ball. These are literally little balls of tea leaves. Sometimes they have flowers mixed in with them. Uh, they can be done all kinds of different types of tea. They are a little bit harder to brew. Um, so these in something like this or this are be your easiest way to do it because you can allow it to just soak and absorb and, and eventually break down. Tr doing it, doing it, um, in something like this or even this would take a while you'd have to really let it sit and then pour off the water let it sit for a while kind of let it soften you do not want to take a, a pick to these you're going to stab yourself you're going to break it apart in a bad way it's not worth it um so these are kind of a more niche thing they're they're definitely a little bit harder to work with um but some people do enjoy them and they are they are they are a neat, neat little uh, addition to a tea collection. Similarly, we have these. So these are little citruses. This does not want to open up for me. Little citruses that have tea packed into them. These are usually pu'er, which is going to be aged. Um, Trying to preserve this one. Okay. There we go. So this is a, um, a, a orange, which has been filled with pu'er. You can see the tea, and it's a dried. It's a dried orange. It's a bitter orange. It's a dried orange, but um, it's filled with it, and then they age this. This is, I believe, seven years old, maybe more. Um, what you would do is when you're ready to use it, you could, you could try to, to knock this, sometimes this is loose, but you're gonna cr basically break the this open and, because you want you want all those flavors and you're gonna brew everything together. Um, so you're gonna get these nice citrusy notes and you're also gonna get the kind of danker, deeper notes of the tea itself. Um, it's very easy to brew. The tea inside is usually loose. Um, in fact, we will probably just end up brewing this because it's open, so as the kids say, YOLO. So we'll set that aside and we'll, we'll, we'll do it in here. So let's give this a just go. Oh yeah. You do not want to open up. Uh, there we go. So you can see this tea slowly coming apart, slowly loosening up. You don't really want to finger it moving around like I am, but I just wanted to kind of show you the the loose kind of soft broken up tea that it is. Usually one would have a little more patience with it. Deep, dark red color. Very nice. <clears throat> now, this kind of tea, this uh, Excuse me, the show pu'er, the right pu'er, is really hard to overbrew, so that's why I wasn't, wasn't afraid to kind of let it go that extra bit of time trying to open it up. 
So we'll show off the citrus ball, if you will. So I'll also show you how the Easy Guy one works. We almost forgot about that. So you do not have to use this if you do not wish to. As you can see right here, there's filtration on the inside. Um, however, if you're new or if you have something very fine that you don't want particulates, even though this will, as you can see, catch those particulates, um, you can always utilize this. I'm going to go without that because I don't need that, but I will show you the other part of it. So we're going to take our, our, our top and we're going to get as much as we can out. And then very carefully, nope, oh, this one does not want to crack. There we go. Be careful. You don't want to, you don't want to cut yourself on a sharp edge of a <laughs> dried fruit. That would be an unfortunate circumstance. Now you don't have to use the whole fruit if you don't wish to. I like I like the flavor, so I like to put the whole thing in. But uh, it allows you to kind of uh, kind of pick and choose. So we've got the, the shells, if you will, and we've got the tea. Same process as before. We're going to fill it up with water. Now this has a nice little lip on the inside of it, which will allow you to know when to stop pouring the tea. But unlike the guy one where you were gripping the ed the ad direct edges and trying to do the or the with the easy guy one, you have the edges made up for you. So all you have to do is Put your finger down here, which has a nice recess, and pour. And this is going to prevent you from burning yourself. It's going to give you a little more control. It's good for if you're learning how to use a guy one. This is the wash. Already got a nice color. Demonstrating tea is such a strange thing because there's not a lot, a lot of interaction, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of let's wait for the tea to brew, let's talk about the tea, let's go wait for the tea to brew, and kind of a circular motion of just waiting. <laughs> now occasionally, you can see this, you might see this coming out a little bit. So occasionally the tea will get clumped up towards that hole, so you might have to shake it a little bit. Let's see, everything is trying to get that get stuck on the top. You can see how that, that bitter orange is already starting to get some color to it. Now you might be confused because it's green. But it is, a, it is a type of orange. It's got this nice, lovely color. With that, with this being looser, yeah, you can see it's infusing that color and infusing those flavors a lot quicker than the uh, cake that was was uh, clumped together and compressed. On the nose, right before that even got to my mouth, I could smell that citrus. It's delightful. It's it's it's, it's just slightly, slight air, citrus aromatic. Very good. Gonna do one more brewing. And then we're going to circle around to our last, last tea.
So as you probably noticed, there's there's a lot of overlap. There's a lot of a lot of uh, similar characteristics between each thing, and there's just a little bit of nuance whether it's um, the tea being comp compressed or not compressed, the tea being quickly brewed or, or or not quickly brewed, the tea being in a different type of vessel, uh, a different type of pouring method. Overall, though, um, the the logistics stay the same. Of, it's the amount of tea that you're using, the time that you're brewing your tea for, the temperature. Those three things are are cons constant, and um, the most important part of no matter what you're doing. Um, and other than that, it's just tea and water. It's almost almost always almost always simply that. So um, <clears throat> each little thing may be different, but they're not so alien from each other. I'm gonna do this a few more seconds. And then... One of the things too is like, when you're pouring like this, it allows you to pour a little bit further away and that allows you to just, it's not significant, but it's significant, uh, cool down the tea a little bit. So let's show off those tea as well. Mm -hmm. All right. I can smell that from here. <laughs> And then that that citrus note is really kicked up, like it's subtle. It's 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 balanced, but you you very much at the same time you really can get it on the nose. It's just um, very 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 um, flavorful, very very aromatic. All right, if you want to pause, we need to take a uh, water dump. My water pitcher was overflowing with water. Uh, so my last one, we've got another uh, compressed cake. This one is shaped like a, a little heart. So this is a this is a dark tea, and this has a um, special herb in it that tastes like sticky rice. I wanted to demonstrate how one can use something like this, do a Western style. And utilize something like this. So you do not have to do everything into in a guy one. Not everything has to be in a guy one. Um, so I'm gonna place our water over top of this. I have run out of water. Not a worry, just under. And we're gonna take a short break while I clean up and we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay. We've cleaned up a little bit. We've let the uh, sticky rice pu'er brew. As you can see, it's all broken up. There's no little piece in between. So, we'll pour that out. Well, you couldn't demonstrate straight earlier because the tea did not want to give up its its shape. That's what you're gonna end up with. It's gonna come apart real nice, real loose. And it's gonna fuse deeply. Like I said, you can do all you can do teas, Western or Eastern. It's not necessarily that you have to do it a certain way. It's just it's all, it depends on your preference. I want to show you the different ways to do those things. So that's how you can do a a uh, compressed tea, uh, just in the Western style. Delightful. Um, two last things before we go. I talked about it earlier, I didn't have it with me. Um, this is a Yixing red clay teapot from China. Um, this one is um, probably machine produced because the lid's a little bit looser, but you can, might be able to see on the inside, right where the spout hits, there's a, there's little holes that's going to help 
keep the tea from coming out. This will be used for gong fu as well. Um, this one I use primarily for my pu'ers. Uh, however, I didn't bring it downstairs because I didn't want to over clutter and I already had plenty of different throwing devices, but this is going to hold a lot of heat for a lot of time, which is going to really um, allow the the teas that can take that kind of temperature to uh, brew at the correct temperature and really infuse properly. Um, the other thing I want to note was I unfortunately ran out of matcha today. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to air before or after the cooking segment, but the matcha I had in-house in got used in the Dalgana matcha, which was delightful. But uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to show off how to make uh, matcha, so um, perhaps I'll be able to show that another day. Um, but until then, we'll just have to stick to the, to the loose leaves and the uh, uh, larger loose leaf teas that we showed off today. If you have any questions, again, my name is Jeremiah, Jeremiah Cornspan. I'm the Tzar, the head of food and beverage, and one of the COGS board members. You can reach out to me through the COGS page, or you can go to my uh, direct page, again, Jeremiah Cornspan, that's with a K. Um, if not, uh, hopefully I will see you at COGS uh, later on this year. You know, we, if you have any questions then, absolutely let me know. If you have a need for recommendations on tea, do let me know as well as I... MAT enthusiasts. Uh, enjoy the rest of the COG stream, Streampunk, and I hope to see you at COG's Expo. Thanks.